I think there's something in horology for everyone if they're if they're curious, if they're interested in intellectual topics. I think almost everybody would find something of interest in horology, and I would like to see the NAWCC prosper and um, get even larger. I think that the organization. This organization, the National Association of Watch and Clock Collectors, is the world leader in terms of we are the greatest repository of horologic literature. People can come here at the headquarters in Columbia, Pennsylvania, do research. They always see a friendly face. Um, I've come here to do research and I've seen people that I used to know in Philadelphia. And it's, it's just a wonderful common thread of life. People that are interested, it's amazing how many people have an interest in watches and clocks or the study of time or, or the whole attitude of time, but they don't know where to go. Well, it's kind of a, a virus-like, and I, I think lots of our members have gone through this. You get one and then you need another one and then you need a, the third one and it just goes on and on and on. And I think there's great joy in collecting anything. People who have a passion for whatever the area is, and the willingness to give their time and effort and passion to others. And I think that's, that's one of the challenges, is taking the knowledge that our members have and having them train and teach others. I'm interested in seeing what other people do. I've sort of reached what I thought was the end of my line, which is making watches and clocks and things of that sort. So I, I like to see what other people do. they had a mission statement. And the mission statement in the beginning was the organization for those who were interested in the collecting and studying of old or unusual timepieces of all varieties. At the time of the early 40s when NEWCC people, some people were trying to put together an organization in the United States. One was in the South, the Watch Collectors Club. And then there was also the Clock Club that was in existence. In fact, the ones that started the NAWCC asked them to look at their constitution and their bylaws just, you know, to try to put their own together. So in 1943, they did begin the first chapter in Philadelphia. The next one was going to be in New York City. So now that was 43. In 1944, we've got 93 members already. And in 1948, they had 700 members. So things were snowballing. 1951, they started the Mart. The Mart is sort of like a trade exchange kind of magazine, so they had started that. A lot of people have said, why Columbia? Why is NEWCC here? Well, there was a man named Earl Strickler, and he had sort of like his own little museum. And so they used his house as, as a museum. It wasn't open to the public, but members knew about it. 1965, the budget for NAWCC was $50,000. That was it, and we had 4,000 members at that time. In 1968, a bank building became available, and it's probably a few hundred yards from here. So they purchased that and moved things out of Mr. Strickler's home into that. And again, this became a more public place than going to the guy and going down to his basement where he, where he housed his, his clocks. And then after that, that one, they outgrew that. 1971, they went to a Pennsylvania light building. So in 1977, the museum and the gallery opened. And in 1985 and in 1988, we either had an addition or an expansion of, the, of, of those buildings. In 1989, the Engel clock, which is an enormous clock that we have in the museum, was installed, and I'm sure membership had a lot to do with the restoration, because uh, I know there was fundraising for that, but that was in 1989. And then in 92, if you look outside, we have a four dial clock that was installed then. In 1993, we had the new bell tower installed. In 1998, the museum was closed for total makeover. It was maybe $38 million makeover, and it didn't reopen again until 1999 in the fall. Just like any other nonprofit, 
I'm sure our association, you have a fluctuation of members. People die, people become disinterested, a family doesn't want to continue with that. Um, and of course with mobile phones, a lot of the young people don't use watches anymore. But there's a fashion statement coming around now, right now and more people are wearing some kinds of, of watches or um, vintage watches they want to get a hold of. They go to the shops and trying to just get a vintage watch and you got to find new members. But maybe some help comes from the entertainers. We got Kanye West and Jay-Z and Matt Damon, Charlie Sheehan, Brad Pitt, Daniel Craig, Sylvester Stallone, Serena Williams. These are the ones making sure that you see their watch. It's good for the watch industry for people to see that. The Apple Watch might be helping. I don't know. This is a weird movement that started in England of all places. The home of Big Ben is where this started. Schools in England are removing analog clocks from classrooms because the kids can't tell time anymore. They only understand digital clocks because they all have phones and uh, it, which is shocking, but I have a feeling we might have the same problem here. So we went on the street today to ask kids if they know what time it is. And these are, our, I will admit, very unscientific findings on that subject. What time does it say it is on this clock? I don't know. Do you know what time it is? Um, no. Uh, um, uh, is it? 923? One? Uh, seven? One or seven? One. Seven. Well, the biggest challenge we have now is membership. And that's happening with all organizations like this. I think mean, the new generation doesn't seem to be as interested in these kind of things. You have to take something that's complicated and make it simple. Uh, and very few people can do that. And I, 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 that is, that's been my approach to the watch and clock world. I've made some incredibly complex clocks, but they're made in a simplistic, in a simplistic way. Well, and I think too the industrialization part of it, um, have, understanding the place that horology has had, because they were the first ones to have mass production and interchangeable parts. And I think, I think that's something that's missing with students today. They don't. They don't think back to those times and, and see where we've come from. Time has always been important to people. You, we measure it for different reasons. Many homes have clocks. They do not know who made them. And you have to have a pamphlet. Let us explain to you who made your clock, how it works. And it's commitment to saving things horological and preserving it for the future and that's my main concern now is that I would like kids in the future to have the same opportunities that I had of being exposed to this stuff which is to me even then was exciting and interesting most of them have never been exposed to it before they don't know what's out there if we older people try to personally invite some younger people who we think might have a propensity for the old mechanical clocks and to an extent some electric clocks too. I think it might be a real avenue for increasing our younger membership. We're going to take off the verge and we're going to show you what happens when you take it off. All right, I'll take the verge, you hold the escape. And don't let it go. So we'll take off the verge and just let it go a little bit. I remember as a kid, my mother had an old mantle clock and it didn't work. And I kept asking her, can we get that working? And I remember when she wasn't around, I'd take it and I'd try to fool with it when I was a kid. You have, uh, as a grandparent, and when I, and my, uh, I had seven kids, so as a father, I tried to make sure they all helped with things that I was doing that was mechanical. And it goes back to my grandfather when I used to visit him. 
he'd take out boards with screws and nails and everything and have me practice with Phillips head and slot heads and you know righty tighty lefty loosey and all that stuff when I was a little kid so every time I would visit he'd have some new project for me to do and that set me up for a lifetime of ba being handy and, and, and doing things myself I'm oh, very satisfied and proud of him um, to see him progressing uh, like he is when he was just a little kid you know and my arms could take him around to now and he knows his way around you know the workshop and I love to see him working on a clock and taking a movement out. And uh, he's, he's, he's learning a lot and it teaches kids a lot about mechanics and about using tools, which I think would help them in all aspects of their life and when they grow up. Papa, he um, like sort of showed me the back of a clock and I saw the back on how all the gears work together to make it one of those that move and make the pendulum move, keep it right on time. And um, he just inspired me about it. I would like to learn and teach other kids about clocks and teach them how to restore them. I would take my grandsons and granddaughters, if, if I were Papa, um, I would do the same thing he did with me, walk them around and um, name the clocks for them and then eventually um, I think they would be able to name all the clocks when we walked around just like I did. Well, when I was younger, more around this kid's age, um, uh, I used to come to his old shop a lot and I would uh, go there mostly when I... Uh, most, I was too young. Yeah, when this guy was too young. Uh, it was kind of like really fun babysitting, but not. And uh, yeah, it was it was fun. Uh, I got to work with some clocks at that time. I uh, took a part and put back together a couple cuckoos. It was fun. And uh, yeah, this, this boy. <laughs> And then he finally got old enough to start coming. And then I kind of took over. Yeah. Now he doesn't he, really come. He took off on watches more than clocks. He really likes the watches. Yeah. So I'm trying to really get him involved in that. Right. That's pretty, it's just cool that we all do something together, you know? Something that, that we all do. <laughs> I used to make you some crazy contraptions to try and help you at work. Yeah. Uh, I remember one time I made an elastic band to go around your head, which had all these compartments to store watch tools and different watch parts. Um, I don't think you ever wore it, but that's okay. Oh, I wore it once. <laughs> well, my father, he was a watch repairman. So I was around it my whole life. I saw him repair watches. And during high school, I was a hands-on kind of person. I wasn't a book kind of person. And after high school, I enjoyed working on cars. And I had the, the uh, privilege of going to Bowman Technical School, which was very close in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which was one of the best horological schools at its time. And my story is almost the exact same. <laughs> so growing up, I was also very mechanically uh, handy. I like to take engines apart and put them back together. Um, again, I also fell in love with cars, but I kind of liked working on my own more so than others. Um, and I was always looking over dad's shoulder and I got to see him at the bench every day. So I got to see what he was doing. And then I enrolled into a two day pocket watch class. The one that uh, me and my wife currently teach at the NWCC. Uh, took that, fell in love with it. I'm very proud of Drill because he took the watchmaking to the next generation. Not only, not only to the next generation, but a whole new aspect of the watch repair. He's doing things that my father could not do, which I could not do. I love it. It's like uh, I get to share my own knowledge and what I'm doing in my field um, with others. So if we can share our passion and explain to someone else why we're passionate in it, it might spark that little interest in them of why they actually like the watches. And then they might have the mechanical appreciation that we do.
I don't know why I started doing the videography, especially for the horological world. It's because, okay, so we see the issue that this younger generation, they're so tech savvy and they love scrolling through Facebook and Instagram. So how can we reach them through their own avenues? It's not local anymore, it's global. So through uh, the social media, through private exhibits, through permanent exhibits, you've got to move your derriere, if I can say this in the French way. But you know, it's either you move or you die. It's like dinosaurs. They have to keep moving. Otherwise, the ice age is coming. Always we should strive for the highest quality. We will, we will survive and we will prosper if we emphasize the very, very best. And we will wither on the vine if we allow um, standards to slip. We have to find the members who are in it for the knowledge and uh, for the relationships, for the learning. And we have, I think, uh, turned the corner in gradually in the last uh, in the last few years so these these young folks unless they're inspired by someone who has an interest in horology they will not bring about their own interest in horology um, i say that because i think it's incumbent upon each member to find to look for someone that might have an interest show them your collection take something apart with them, see what their reaction is. I was 30, 40 years younger than they were, but they took the time to, to take me under their wing, teach me things, and like I said, you know, when, when these guys pass, all of that information goes well if they don't share it. To me, the most important thing are the relationships. And now I have realized that all of my mentors are gone now. And I look in the mirror and I say, well, it's your turn. And when you accept that, that you, it's my responsibility now. Let's face it, we're all passing through time. And because of that, we're all connected to time. And I think we all have an understanding or appreciation or a connection to time pieces because it is all reflective of the life that we're living. To me, members are our future and getting younger people, men, women, international members involved in horology will really make the successes that we need to have in the future. And I'm sure the NAWCC will be here for many generations to come.